Hi there, Prairie Plant Girl here. Well, spring has sprung. So we hit some very warm, warm weather over the weekend, for the Easter weekend. We were up in the 20s, I think it was, uh, on Sunday. So it's just been absolutely beautiful and it's gotten rid of a lot of the snow in our yard. So I'm gonna throw in some pictures of what the backyard looked like just, I think it was less than a week ago, maybe five days ago. And then we'll go for a little walk around and I'll show you the reality of what it looks like with the snow melt. And we'll also peek into the, the front yard as well. I'll tell you things that I could be doing right now and things that I'll be waiting a little bit longer for. So let's get going. So here's just a really quick look at the difference just like really about three days can make in the yard here. Almost all the snow is gone, just a little bit left in some of the shadier places or places really where it was piled up more. I thought we'd start in the front yard here because uh, it's a little bit breezy out and it's less sheltered out here and I think it, the windows are supposed to get up more and more so we'll try and get this looked at real quick, it won't take long. There's not much to look at this time of year. So right down here, right in front of me here, this is some of that creeping thyme. Uh, some people had asked about it, I, I sowed some more this year and uh, some people wanted to see the stuff that I had already in early spring so that's what it looks like. There's more way down at the end there, there's more over there and it really does creep. It covers up, there's a whole bunch of like flat stones in this walkway at the beginnings and it covers it up. I've had to, I've tried to unearth some of the stones last, last spring so that really covers it all up and it's crept right out of the walkway and I, I pull that up all the time try and move it around a bit. There's a sign of spring. Hey little bunny. So things are pretty wet out front here still. The pathway that I'm walking on has gravel as you may have noticed underneath it all. I'm at the other end now so you're sitting on the sidewalk towards the street and this is more of that beautiful thyme pathway here. Uh, on the sides especially the one side to my left is just covered in water because it's the backyard of my yard and my neighbor's yard drain out to the front here to get it out of our yards. Great thing to think about when you're landscaping if you have a new property is to make sure that drainage is going away from your house. So right now there's a lot of leaves piled up in uh, all, of my, all of my shrubbery and there's lots of dead from the perennials that are left here and I won't be doing anything with that for quite a while because A, it's just too wet and you don't want to be working in around all that and be compacting the soil and you know possibly damaging the plants, spreading disease and also it hasn't been staying consistently warm enough for the pollinators and you know all those good guys that we want in our gardens to be moved out and out of their winter hiding places. I did see a ladybug in the greenhouse yesterday, so I think they're starting to move around, but yesterday it was absolutely beautiful. I think it was 17 degrees out. Today and for the next few days, it's still supposed to be a little bit chillier and actually dipping below freezing. This is a great time to look at the winter interest that you have in your yard and to fill in any gaps. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today while we go around and walk and look. So you might be able to see all the water here laying here and it'll slowly drain away but that's what's been coming from the backyards but i can see here the evergreen which is nice to have this all does get buried in snow over the winter most years but it's still nice to have when we have little snow cover or the occasional times when it melts over the winter and just to see this time of year just have something that's just a little bit nicer and cleaner i have a few grasses here and I'm going to be adding some more this year but it looks like they've survived all right these couple here so time will tell on how well they do. I have a willow here. I have two different willows. I can't remember the variety names but the one gets a little bit more smashed down every year. The, the stems aren't as strong with it and uh, this one does better. I'll try and put on the screen which is which. I'm sure I have the tags in the house but I love this red color of the uh, stems and I have the same kind of grouping of juniper and willows on the other front corner of my yard. So here's the other corner. You can see how much more vibrant and strong the stems are on the one willow compared to the one in behind the juniper there. Just have some large rocks that were collected from around my parents' property that I brought in here when I designed this yard and there's all sorts of perennial ground covers and things that will fill in this space 
uh, as the as the weather warms up here. So when you come through from the street and you have a nice walkway here. I have planting bed to this side over here. There's a small one right there, walkway there, walkway there. A planting bed that swoops around this bench and some spirea shrubs and uh, cedar. I can't remember what that is back there. And there's some grasses back there. And then I just put in some, I think they're called blueberry muffin. Uh, shrubs. There's spirea as well, I believe. I'll correct it on the screen. My, I'm out of garden mode, I guess. I can't remember the names of them. I had some forsythia in the spots of those new shrubs there, but they were just getting too tall for the space. I didn't think they'd grow as well as they do, as they did here because they're kind of borderline hardy, but uh, it's a little more sheltered in that area, and I guess they liked that. All, all of the perennials will have died back to the ground pretty much. They do have some pen penstemon, I believe that is there, that has a little bit of green on the stems. Uh, I can't remember what that is back there. Dianthus maybe. There's some avens back there that's still a little bit green, but lots of things that need to be cut back and cleaned up. But again, I won't be doing that until Pollinators have had a chance to get out of the ground, out of the stems, out of the leaf litter, and till the ground is a little bit less saturated, because this was all covered in at least three feet of snow just a few days ago. One of the beautiful things, if you aren't used to heavy snow cover in the winter, is snow mold. So that's what that is there. And it'll just take some rains and raking uh, to clean that up off the ground. It doesn't really hurt anything. It's just kind of unsightly and it's horrible for those of us that suffer from allergies because it uh, makes them pretty bad. I can see right here a little bit of a tulip. A couple tulips starting to poke out so that's nice to see and this here is exactly why you don't want to be cleaning up too early. Those are some little ladybugs hiding in there trying to stay warm. Hoping to get to the garden center and get a few plants to freshen up these pots because right now it's just just wooden wooden plastic and tin <laughs> put a little bit of color at the front door and uh, I'd like to have something else I do have some things that can go out but I'd, things aren't as far along because it's been so cold uh, up until the last couple of days and I've been keeping my more cold hardy plants in the greenhouse so they just haven't had the growth that they might normally have if I'd had them inside but that's just learning first year at the greenhouse so let's go see the backyard. So this is my backyard as you enter it and here comes Buster. He's excited. He was allowed out front with me. Yeah. Yeah, we came back. Yeah. Oh, someone's excited. So I have a few little things tucked in this corner. You can see this is a shadier corner in my yard. It just gets morning sun. Uh, today, obviously, not so much because we're pretty overcast. But uh, I have a lot of evergreen things like some creeping dogwood in here. I have some lungwort. I have lots of spring ephemeral plants that'll be coming up like shooting stars and trilliums, things like that that'll come up and give me a little bit of color and a little bit of life here early on. I have, I have a hydrangea right here. I don't know if you can see. See, I don't think you can see it in the shot there. Hey, boss. So there's a hydrangea right here. I think that's a little lime. Again, I'm, don't quote me. <laughs> I'm off my game and until things clear up, I, I don't always remember what they're called, but I have it all written down inside. Uh, there's a little Hicks U in the back there. And that's pretty much what I have for winter interest. So I might look at getting another hydrangea for the other corner kind of behind me. I do have a big hydrangea, um, a big hosta back there so I'm not sure but I would like to have a little bit something more over here maybe another little evergreen it would be nice to have so that this time of year when everything's kind of gray and drab there's something a little bit nicer to look at back here I'm going to turn the camera around and you can see what's directly in front of me across from this flower bed that we just looked at so this space here is 
the new flower bed or kind of cut flower area that I made for myself last year. So if you saw those videos, that's what this is. There's a little bit of muscari coming up here. I planted this, transplanted this actually in a video years ago from my front yard. So these are coming up. It's nice to see that green. This foliage would have grown up in the fall and then it's just sat here under the snow and the uh, flower heads will pop up probably in a couple of weeks depending on how fast the weather warms and stays warm. I don't know how well you can see here but there's some rhododendrons under a big ash tree that's beside me and they stay small. These are PJMs and they're supposed to be I think three to five feet but I think in my climate the fact that I've gotten them to be about two to three feet is a real bonus and they're doing quite well. I've had those for years. They're one of the first shrubs that I put in my yard and I'm very happy with how they look. So this part in front of me here was all existing before and it's this part down this side and a little bit underneath this pathway that I added in last year. So stuff up against the fence was here before and I think you can see there's some dwarf Alberta spruces and they really took a beating this year from the winds. The snow was piled up over them most of the year. I wasn't too worried, but in, I think it was March, all of a sudden they just browned right up. The snow had melted off a little bit in March and uh, they took those winds and really, really took a beating. But those brown, brown needles will come out and they'll green up again. There's a little bit of, <laughs> hey Buster, there's a little bit of soapwort ground cover that I planted last year that looks like it's come back and will be doing well. So it's nice and green along the path. And I'm trying to keep my walking along the, uh, the pathways in the backyard because the ground is so wet and sodden. We had two to three feet of snow everywhere across the yard just even a few days ago. So the ground is really, really wet and I don't want to be walking on anywhere where I want things to be growing and compacting the soil. Buster, he doesn't understand that, but he's not as heavy as I am. So there's that muscari there. The little buds, hopefully you can see that on the rhododendrons. There's three of them, so there's two and then three back there. I'm not sure how well they show up on the camera for you. And then yeah, walking down the pathway. I had some lamium in some planters along the walkway beside my house last year and I planted it down the ground. So there's a little piece of it there. I can't remember if I did a video or not. Oh look, another little ladybug. They're starting to wake up. There's more time. I, th I can't remember what time that is there, but that green there is more time and there's more underneath the evergreen there. So here's that soap board I was talking about and you can see it goes along there. So that's a nice evergreen. It's just nice to see those little bits that stay green through the season. There's a plant here and I can't remember and the tags with it. Eonium maybe? And it looks like it stays green. I just planted that last year. So we'll see how it does. There's more of that lamium. And this was a red hot poker that I just left in the ground last year. They're not supposed to be hardy here. I'm zone three and they're supposed to be hardy to zone four. But I tried to overwinter one in a pot a couple of years ago. I did a video on it. It did not survive. But so I'm hoping that actually comes back there for me. There's more of the lamium. And here is some of the rainbow loveliness or lovely. I think it's rainbow loveliness dianthus. I planted last year and it looks like it's come back. I wasn't sure if it would or not. I was finding conflicting uh, information about how hardy it was. There's more soapwort. It's great to have ground covers. They help to, uh, you know, it's just like having a living mulch. So it's great to have them. Everything else is pretty, pretty nasty looking, but uh, it'll come. There's some more, I don't know if well you can see it, but a little bit of green there. That's more thyme right there. There's thyme all over my yard. I love it as a ground cover. It smells so nice. So into my garden space. I should show you this. This is the edging for the new flower bed that I had done and I haven't actually buried it down yet. So I just haven't decided, but I think I'm gonna take it and swoop it out to that cherry tree out there. My finger's making the focus go out. There's, 
you see that black pot, and then there's a cherry tree, and then there's a couple of stepping stones to access that back area. And I think I might do just kind of a rounded swoop in there. So I'm not loving this harsh line. I'll take you and show you another angle of it. So here, you can see it's such a sharp line there. So I'm thinking about just going out, kind of curving it, going out and around, and just ending just kind of on the other side of that pot there. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Is the harsh line over here a good idea? Or swoop it out more, take out more lawn, and then I think I'd kind of do a matching thing on the other side there. There's my strawberries. You hear all sorts of what to do about covering strawberries and protecting strawberries over the winter. This is what my strawberries look like. It looks like I had some birds, bunnies, possibly mice in here, getting at the, bringing seeds in and doing all sorts of things. But I promise you, this will all come back and be beautiful and give me all sorts of strawberries in just a couple of months here. So I don't do anything to it. Just leave the leaves on. I'll come in in the spring, cut back the dead growth. But otherwise, I don't really do anything. I just let the strawberries do their thing. That's where my rhubarb will be coming up. Hopefully soon I'll start seeing that poke up, you know? And my compost area is a little messy. There's lots of twigs. We had that late, or that, we had that early uh, snow in October. It was heavy wet snow. There was twigs and branches all over my yard. And then the evergreen branches are what was in my pots and things. Some of that from making winter decorations out front and that. But I'll, I'll put those through the shredder the chipper and put it in my compost. There's the garden, still a mess. I really need to get more cleaning up done in here, but I've been doing other things. So not much to talk about in here. I need to get these pots off of this bed so it warms up, thaws out. But I do want to show you this. So here is where I planted my garlic. And you can see this, this is actually a trellis here. It has a little bit of netting on it. Yes, monsters. Pop, monsters, you're in the shot. Oh, Joe. <laughs> so, and then the trellis I had laying on top of here because I have all sorts of leaves on here. And this is one of the few places that I am going to be removing my, removing my leaves very shortly. So I've already taken a little bit off of here. Uh, but I will be taking more because I want this bed to warm up and get my garlic going. So I will come through and pull up the bigger leaves. You can see here it's just down to shredded leaves, but I need to come in and pull up where it's matted down and the thicker leaves and get those pulled off of the bed. So I will be doing that probably in the next couple of weeks here and the garlic should start to start growing soon um, once the soil has is able to warm up right now with all of these leaves on here it's going to stay frozen for longer because it's just shading it from the sun and the heat it's insulating it so we need to get the leaves pulled up so this bed can warm up and the garlic can grow oh the sun feel that oh, my hands warm up it's chilly out here sunshine just for a minute there's another big cloud coming in Right here is where I covered up this bed because I want to get my brassicas put in here and they will be going in soon and it's warmed up quite nicely and quite wet in here. No more snow in here, which there's no more snow pretty much anywhere, but this water is just soaking right in. That's just telling me that this ground is probably pretty thawed out in here. I can actually feel warm air coming out of there. And it's just me now slowing the process down. I just need to get those brassicas out here and into this little hoop. Yes, boss. You got grass on your nose. Have you been sniffing? Have you been sniffing your leaves or something stuck to your nose? Yeah, so here's, here's a part of the garden we don't look at very much and it's a real mess right now. But right here is bags of leaves it's behind my greenhouse. I stored them up and I'll be using them in my compost. And then I have my evergreens and I'm really happy to see that they look like they've come back really nice. Uh, I believe this is a white pine, Montgomery blue spruce. I can't remember what that tiny little one in the back is there. They're looking good. I have some sunflower stalks that need to get cleaned up out of that tree there. And just a little bit of general tidying up, but there was water 
running through here just yesterday and I don't want to I don't want to get in here walking around and trampling this all down too much so I'll just leave it for now uh, I don't know if you can tell through the fence but it looks like the neighbor's snow has melted back there for the most part just like mine even more than mine he was spreading his out getting it all melted out yesterday so his yard drains into mine and that's great to see that his is all finished melting because that'll that'll mean my yard will dry up quicker there's the greenhouse lots going in there yesterday i was working on covering up some of the gaps between some of the windows so it's not the prettiest job in the world i just used whatever bits and bobs of wood i had painted around and just put some framing framing around the windows to try and get it closed in a bit more. Right here is where there was water pouring. Water actually runs through the greenhouse. It was full of water just a few days ago. And uh, I, I knew that was a definite possibility because of how much comes out of the yard behind us. And I got it all draining out of there yesterday, so I think it's pretty dry. Let's have a quick peek. Oh, it's warm in here. It's nice. I have a fan going, just trying to circulate the air a little bit. So hopefully it's not too loud, but we won't be in here long. But I potted up. I had these potatoes growing in my living room. I potted them up into some bigger pots the other day and brought them out here. I'm not sure they're happy with me about that, but that's fine. There's some ranunculus. More ranunculus. Uh, I think that's my... Yeah, my little blue stem in there. There's the brassicas that need to go out in that bed. Like I said, things are a little bit further behind here than I would have expected, but that's because it's my first year in the greenhouse, having the greenhouse, and uh, it's just been a little bit cooler in here, and I haven't been really babying them too much, so they haven't had the chance to grow like they would if they were in the house. There's some foxgloves I just kind of playing around to see. I don't have all my foxgloves out here. I don't think. I might have all my foxgloves out here and some snapdragons, some double flowering cabbage, celeries back there, more ranunculus. This is that creeping thyme that I was talking about that um, I'm gonna put in the front yard. And then more ranunculus, some dusty miller, a little bit of pansies. Didn't have very good germination with my pansies this year, but I have a couple, but you can see why I wanna to go to the garden center and get something that's looking a little better because I started these months and months ago and they just haven't really done much. Um, I don't remember, oh, delphinium, so that's what that is over there. A Little bit of water still on the floor here, but much better than it was a few days ago. Here's some petunias. Most of my petunias are still in the house, but I did throw a few out here just to see how they'll do, just out of curiosity. And there's some snapdragons and things. They're doing quite well. Ranunculus. Here's some flowers I planted up a few days, maybe a week ago now. Uh, some pots with lettuce seed. And this is another sowing of uh, cabbage and cauliflower. And I don't know, is it broccoli? No, just cabbage and cauliflower. And then I have some kale and bok choy there. There's my onions. I had to move them. The dish I used was much not as deep as the what I usually use. And it, they just weren't happy. So normally I would just leave them in a, a big tray all together, but I, I separated them out into these pots just to give them more space because they just weren't doing well this year for some reason. See the birds up in the tree. Little finches and some sparrows. But look at this, my tulips. So I'm loving these. What are these, White Hero? I don't know why I can never remember what they're called. White Prince. And they have the most beautiful little blush of purpley pink on them. Now these have been blooming for weeks already. So they're not, they're kind of getting closer to the end. Some of these here. But then, remember I planted them in layers. So there's some in the center that are just starting. And they look pure white. And then as they age, they get this little streaks on them. They're absolutely gorgeous. And then over here, what variety was this? They just really started to pop out this week. Raspberry Ripple. 
just gorgeous. I think these are doubles and it looks like it. So they should open up more, but we'll see. We'll see how they do. And I have another pot over here. I think these were called Black Hero. And this is a really deep kind of purple color. Right now they're not looking like they're gonna be that dark, but once they open, they might. So if you were gonna pick tulips for a bouquet, you would pull the whole thing up at this point, bulb and all, cut the bulb off uh, when they're like color cracking like this. So just a little thought there if you're interested in that. All okay. right, oh, there's more, more pansies and bunny tails grass and dianthus and Dusty Miller under there, I forgot about. Well, let's go see the rest of the yard. If you're curious, it's about 11 degrees Celsius or 52 Fahrenheit in here right now. So like I said, I'm trying to stay off the grass and any growing spaces in the yard right now. It is just absolutely wet. You can probably see there's a huge puddle of water back there where that snow was melting as it slowly drains away. Where I'm standing yes, right now was an actual river of water pouring out of my yard uh, and out to the street yesterday. It's a little bit colder today. Not as much movement in the moisture here. But I have some flower beds along the side there. And for the most part, that looks like things are doing all right. Looks like the, the U back there took a little bit of uh, beating. It's a little browned off, but if they do that, it'll come back for me. I'll just trim up anything that needs to be trimmed off later on. And the hydrangeas will need to trim once I can get over to them and just trim them all up. And that's about all. I guess my cherry trees will need a little bit of trimming too. So there's not much left. This grass here, you can see where there's this kind of yellowy brown path here. That's because I keep that cleared down to just about this much snow over the winter and the dog and I use that as a path. He's trained to do his business back in the back of the yard so he needs a way to get back there through two and three feet of snow and I need a way to get back to the greenhouse so I, I keep that path cleared in the winter and so it is a little bit hard on the grass but when the ground is frozen it's not as bad but as things start to melt it definitely shows its wear. So this is just just facing kind of to the to my left of where we were a minute ago there and you can see those evergreens there and they were just flattened by that snow in October that's mugo pines there and I was thinking that they were just going to stay flat and I wasn't too worried about it because I'd actually like to replace those this year but they have stood right back up as the snow has melted and things have warmed up so it's it's going to be hard for me to pull them out if I do, but I'd really like to get, there's a, a black choke cherry in the middle of them. I don't know if you can, like right here is a, is a regular Romeo cherry. And then, I don't know if you can see there, where I was just showing you the birds and the trees there. That's a black choke cherry. And it's in the center of those pines. I'd like to get some evergreen, but more broadleaf evergreens to put in there and some smaller, pines or something that don't get quite so big and just make a little bit different planting area and then like I said maybe swoop this grass out to match the other side if I decide to do the other side and just extend that planting space a little bit more. So that's what I'm kind of thinking about doing for this year is replacing those. They're getting a little bit bare at the bottoms. It's hard to tell here uh, but they're just they've kind of reached their age. They are some of the other original plantings from when we first got the property so it's been 13, 15 years, something like that. So they've, they've done some time here and I think they've, they're ready to, to come out. So that's, that's what my yard is looking like in the spring. Maybe you can see a little bit of a river going along behind me there. It's nice to have those little bits of uh, red twigs and things in some of the plants and some of the evergreens and just to have a little bit of that interest right now while we wait for things to dry out and I can get in the yard and actually work on some of these flower beds, clean them up a little bit and prune back my shrubs and things. But that'll all have to wait at least a week, I'd say, if not longer until it's warmer out and things have dried up more. Hopefully you found it interesting to see what the yard looks like. You know, if you're feeling bad, you look at sometimes the YouTube videos of some of the, the warmer climates. If you live in a climate like mine, it could be hard to to look out your own window 
when you're looking at spring and flowers and blooms everywhere else. And for those of you that live in a warmer climate and you don't really see, you, you know the snow's so pretty, but you don't really see what happens when it melts, that's what happens, that's what it looks like. Well, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. You ready to go inside?